right now what we're going to begin talking about is going to be uh, we're going to be discussing pancreatic pathologies uh, and basically with the pancreas uh, we have two main uh, diseases besides obviously the adenocarcinoma uh, one could be acute pancreatitis and uh, the other is chronic pancreatitis Uh, the biggest difference between these two is uh, chronic pancreatitis uh, is basically irreversible. Uh, it's irreversible destruction, and the reason why it's irreversible is because there's uh, fibrosis uh, and there's destruction of the, uh, the, the exocrine parenchyma. Whereas in acute pancreatitis, uh, the whole issue is you get enzymes which get inappropriately activated and that leads to auto digestion so this is your overall uh, issues that we have going on here and this is how you tell the differences now um, let's focus now on the causes now the causes for acute pancreatitis there's a mnemonic get smashed so uh, in get smashed you have G which stands for gallstones E stands for ethanol and T stands for trauma then we have uh, the smashed uh, steroids can cause acute pancreatitis mumps can cause acute pancreatitis um, auto, uh, any autoimmune causes uh, you can even the, S, the second S stands for scorpion sting um, H is going to be either hypercalcemia or hypertriglyceridemia uh, can uh, lead to that uh, ERCP can trigger that and even drugs but out of these um, gallstones and ethanol uh, is going to be about 80 percent of the uh, causes so this is these two these two right here are a majority of the causes now if you take a look at the pathogenesis um, We'll just move down here. Um, if we take a look at the pathogenesis um, of how gallstones, let's first take a look at gallstones. How does gallstone cause acute pancreatitis? Well, there's there's two things here. Now, this is a common uh, bile duct, and so a gallstone can lodge here. And when it lodges here, obviously everything that's coming down from the pancreas gets blocked up, and so then you have uh, distension of the pink. Uh, of the pancreatic duct. Not, on, not only that, but the bile will end up refluxing. So you get bile reflux. Now when you get bile reflux, of course, there's a lot of fat uh, in the bile. And so uh, when you get fat in there, you're going to, uh, when you get accumulation of fat, uh, this leads to um, uh, obviously fat digestion and then eventually calcification. And that's where you can start getting issues uh, in your um, pancreas and also that the bile can damage epithelium and activate enzymes uh, within it. You can also get reflux of bile uh, back into it but this wasn't really that common of a cause. Um, the other one is going to be alcohol. So how does alcohol uh, cause damage? One thing that it does is it increases the permeability of the membrane to uh, the enzymes. So what will happen is once the uh, gland makes the enzymes and it goes out, it goes out into interstitium and it starts degrading things in interstitium. Um, the other thing that alcohol does is it uh, changes the shapes of the proteins and this leads to deposition and it can lead to the formation of uh, protein plugs. Um, and then so so th those are there and then the other one you have is going to be intracellular activation uh, which basically is going to be a problem in the Golgi apparatus. Uh, the lysosomes that go out uh, fuse with the uh, zymogen granules and they get activated within the cell and causing uh, auto digestion within the cell. Um, and here, so all of these will end up leading to acute pancreatitis. And what you'll notice is this is the normal. So you can see the normal, it's uh, very small, whereas in the abnormal, it's dilated, edematous, and uh, really, really large. So 
it's pretty much how you can uh, diagnose Q pancreatitis using a uh, X-ray or uh, MRI. There. Now, we we discussed uh, activation of enzymes. The main enzyme that gets activated is trypsin, and trypsin can cause a lot of problems because trypsin ends up activating all the other enzymes. So what what will it activate? The lipase, elastase, complement factors, thrombin factors, and even calocrine, which is an inflammatory factor. Um, phospholipase has uh, a lot of effects. Um, it'll start breaking down fat, leading to fat necrosis, and fat necrosis leads to calcium sequestration, um, which is called uh, liquefactive, no, sorry, uh, lipoid necrosis, and um, eventually leading to hypocalcemia because of that calcium sequestration. Not only that, but phospholipase goes into the lungs and breaks down lung surfactants, and this can lead to um, uh, ARDS or and then of course you can get to the hypoxia. Uh, the other one's going to be elastase. Elastase, um, primarily we're talking about elastase and complement factors will start messing up the vessels. Um, so you get inflammation plus uh, elastase and that's going to start leading to bleeding and then you're going to get a lack of blood supply which can lead to edema and you know gangrene of the um, pancreas. Now elastase also affects the um, islet cells, so you're going to get, uh, so then you're going to have decreased production of insulin, and of course it's going to be diabetes, hyperglycemia. Um, trypsin also activates prothrombin factors, and so basically what you get, you get thrombosis, ischemia, and that can lead to your uh, gangrene again, and of course pain in the extremities, uh, which can occur. Calocrine um, gets activated by, uh, by trypsin, and that can lead to vasodilation and uh, shock, and this is where your DIC comes from. Uh, and you get some systemic damage such as anuria as well uh, with um, pancreas. So acute pancreatitis uh, can be life-threatening uh, in these situations. Um, just to wrap it up, what are the clinical signs? Um, the clinical signs, uh, the, the, the main clinical sign that you'll see is going to be abdominal pain that radiates to back. So if you see that, you're, you're, you know, this is a big uh, clue for that. And of course, you have anorexia, and you're going to get some vomiting. Um, and on lab, so if we look at labs, uh, you're going to have increased amylase and lipase is going to be increased. Uh, this is going to be more specific, and it's going to be within the first 24 hours. Um, and of course, you're going to have, like we said, you have hypocalcemia and hypoglycemia. Uh, Albuminemia. So that's going to be really quickly about uh, acute uh, pancreatitis. Now let's look at chronic pancreatitis. Um, what are the causes of chronic pancreatitis? Um, primarily two. It's going to be either alcohol or obstruction. And uh, this would, obstruction would also include causes such as trauma, uh, tumors, uh, cystic fibrosis, which uh, you know, just makes the fluid really thick, so it, it uh, plugs things up. So uh, these are your primary causes of chronic pancreatitis. And obviously, uh, uh, recurrent attacks of acute pancreatitis can also eventually lead to chronic pancreatitis. So let's look at the pathogenesis of it. Um, so what? let's first look at the alcohol. How does alcohol eventually lead to... Um, chronic pancreatitis. So with alcohol abuse, what you're primarily going to be looking at is the fact that uh, you're changing the quality of the pancreatic juice. Um, what you're going to do firstly is you're going to decrease the secretion of water and bicarbonate. So what does that mean? Well obviously you're going to increase the concentration of enzymes uh, and if you increase the concentration of enzymes you get enzyme activation and you get kind of all the problems that you get in acute pancreatitis. The other thing is um, we have uh, two things that's found in your pancreatic juice, primarily citrates and lithostatin. Now these two, uh, they prevent calcium from precipitating. So what alcohol will do is they'll decrease this uh, in the pancreatic juice. That'll lead to calcium deposition. And so that's going to lead to, end, uh, obviously if you have calcium deposition here, it's going to mess up the, uh, uh, epithelium, and you're going to get enzymes secreted out here, causing damage to the surrounding structures. 
The other thing we can look, so that's going to be the first cause of uh, chronic pancreatitis. The other one is going to be obstruction by any of these causes. And I think you, we can add cystic fibrosis as well. Uh, so this, this occlusion will cause distension of the pancreatic duct, as you can see here. Uh, so normally, if you look at this nice, beautiful thing right there, it's going to be nice and thin. Here you can see it's grossly enlarged. And uh, of course, over time, what's going to happen is enzymes will leak into the interstitium and start breaking uh, down. Um, what will you notice? Uh, uh, what will happen to the pancreas overall? You're going to get atrophy, uh, stenosis, and fibrosis. And this is primarily what you're going to be seeing. Um, what are the clinical uh, syndromes? Of course, it's going to be pain because of uh, uh, atrophy and, and that malabsorption. Why? Because, of course, we need to break down food using enzymes from the pancreas. If you can't do that, you're going to get malabsorption, and if you're not eating well, you're going to get weight loss. Uh, when it does get into the endocrine uh, part of the uh, islets uh, cells, you're going to get the patient will have diabetes mellitus. Uh, you do get pancreatic ascites, although I forgot why that, why that is the case. Uh, and you get thrombosis, um, primarily because of the activation of uh, prothrombin by trypsin. Um, jaundice, diarrhea, and even pseudocyst. We're going to go over the pseudocyst in just a little bit. So th that's going to be the uh, causes and uh, pathogenesis of primarily acute pancreatitis and chronic pancreatitis. Now we want to switch focus into cancer. Um, and what we're going to look at is going to be uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma. So what do we have in uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma? Uh, the first thing is going to be uh, you're going to get some pseudocysts. Uh, pseudocyst, it looks like a cancer, but it's not. Um, the reason why it's called a pseudocyst is because there's no epithelial lining. That's the, that's the most important thing to note there. Uh, it can be secondary to uh, some type of chronic pancreatitis or acute pancreatitis and even trauma. And uh, what you so what is it if it has no lining? It's basically some hemorrhagic material. Uh, that's pretty much uh, all you're looking at. There's going to be some. Uh, magic material that uh, is localized. Um, the other, so uh, that's pseudocyst. So now let's talk about adenocarcinoma. There's a few different, uh, there's a few main things you need to know. Uh, first thing is going to be that it's primarily found in the head of the pancreas. Um, we do have some tumor markers, uh, which I'll do that in red. So it's going to be CA19-9. This is very specific. CEA is also there, but this is obviously less specific. Uh, for this, uh, we do have key risk factors which uh, need to be uh, memorized. Uh, the first one is going to be the fact that it's associated with tobacco and not ethanol. So, um, ethanol does not cause pancreatic cancer, but it does cause acute pancreatitis. Um, however, chronic pancreatitis can lead to uh, adenocarcinoma just because you're constantly degrading and building up. Um, Age is also a risk factor. Anyone greater than 50 years old, um, and actually, it's been it's quite prevalent amongst Jews and uh, Africans. What will the, the uh, let's 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 take a look at the clinical um, manifestations of pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Um, it's going to be similar to acute pancreatitis with abdominal pain and uh, radiating to back. Um, obviously because of malabsorption, you're going to get malabsorption, so what does that mean? You're going to get uh, weight loss. And um, what you want to look at now is going to be uh, true so signs. Uh, and basically, Trousseau sign is going to be based migratory thrombophlebitis. Um, and this is going to be basic redness, uh, redness and tenderness in the extremities. And uh, Trousseau actually, interesting story, Trousseau actually diagnosed himself with uh, pancreatic cancer uh, when he noticed these symptoms in himself. Um, and the other one is going to be Carvacier sign. So, uh, sign. Uh, 
And Corvazier's sign uh, is basically uh, whenever someone has obstructive jaundice, um, palpable non tender gallbladder. So whenever someone comes up with these two uh, symptoms here, where you you feel their gallbladder but it's not tender, and they have obstructive jaundice, that is going to be a sign for adenocarcinoma. And finally, uh, there is some uh, treatments uh, for in case someone does have pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Uh, primarily, you can do uh, the Whipple procedure, uh, obviously chemo and radiation. So this is going to be uh, what you would expect to do with someone who has uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma.